Hello and welcome. In this video we are going to look at what is ERP, why do we need SAP ERP and we'll take a look at some of the topics here. The definition of ERP, why exactly do we need it, how did ERP evolve and where is it going, what is postmodern ERP. There are many definitions of ERP floating around and two of the most common ones are listed here. ERP is an acronym for Enterprise Resource Planning. The central feature of an ERP system is a shared database that supports multiple functions used by different business units. Some of the key characteristics of ERP are an integrated centralized system, a common database, and a consistent look and feel across different modules. Why do we need ERP? So this is a typical example of a process flow before ERPs existed. Different departments in a company have their own IT systems and if the customer place an order it would first be logged into the sales system and then logged again into the production system so that the goods can be produced then in onto the logistic system and finally into the billing system. Now this kind of a decentralized process results in delays, lost orders and manual and multiple keying in of the same information. Integrating the data becomes time and money consuming. There are inconsistencies and duplication of data resulting in high inventory, material and human resource cost. With ERP, the data is maintained in a central location and is shared with various departments. And now the departments have access to information and data of all the other departments as well. This eliminates duplication, discontinuity and redundancy in the data and provides real-time information across departments. It provides better controls and increases productivity resulting in better inventory management, reduced material costs and higher profits. Another way to look at the world before ERP is in terms of islands of information. So you have the sales island, the HR island and so on. Now what this results in is it makes it difficult to get timely and accurate information. Results in heterogeneous hardware and software platforms and practices and poor connectivity between different organizational locations. All those islands are brought together in the centralized database of an ERP system providing an integrated system and consistent look and feel across the different functional areas. Here's a look at the evolution of ERP. It all started in the 70s with inventory control packages and MRP and these involved setting targets for inventory providing replenishment techniques and options and monitoring item usages. Material requirement planning was responsible for purchase of raw materials based on the production requirements of finished goods, the structure of the production system, the current inventory levels and the lot sizing procedure for each operation. Then in the 80s, we move to manufacturing resource planning. So this, this was material and this extended to manufacturing, also known as MRP2. So the scope now increased to cover the whole of manufacturing and the software applications were used for coordinating all the manufacturing processes, right from product planning parts purchasing, inventory control and product distribution. And then in the 90s the scope of the software expanded further to include all the other key business function modules like 
finance, accounting, and human resources in addition to manufacturing and inventory management. And now the system was called ERP system, Enterprise Resource Planning. As the internet became more popular, ERP evolved and expanded its functionality into what is popularly known as ERP2. The ERP2 role expanded traditional ERP resource optimization and transactional processing. Rather than just manage buying, selling, etc., ERP2 leverages information in the resources under its management to help the enterprise collaborate with other enterprises. ERP2 is more flexible than the first generation ERP and rather than confine the ERP capabilities within the organization, it goes beyond the corporate walls to interact with other systems. Enterprise Application Suite is an alternative name for such ERP systems. ERP2 systems are typically used to enable collaborative initiatives such as Supply Chain Management SCM, Customer Relationship Management, CRM, and Business Intelligence, BI, among business partner organizations through the use of various e-business technologies. And finally, with the growing popularity of cloud-based inexpensive flexible solutions, we have what is called the postmodern ERP. We'll come back to this. But let's first take a look at some of the key issues with ERP. Because of the high rate of change due to all these factors and the inability of a traditional ERP system to adapt quickly, there is an innovation gap between where companies want to be and where they are restricted to be because of ERP. Customizing of a typical ERP system can be problematic and time-consuming. Re-engineering of new or existing business processes to fit the ERP system can cause a lot of time delays and damage competitiveness. And high ERP switching costs can increase the ERP vendor's negotiating power compared to the client. Because of all these reasons, ERP as it stood 10-20 years ago has to transform itself into something called the postmodern ERP. So here is a typical options diagram of what a postmodern ERP suite of systems might look like. Essentially the basic idea of a postmodern ERP is that there should be a core ERP solution that would cover most important business functions while other functions will be covered by specialist software solutions. This concept is similar to the so-called best of breed approach but it shouldn't be confused with it. While in both cases applications that make up the whole are relatively loosely connected and quite easily interchangeable, in the case of the latter there is no ERP solution whatsoever. Instead, every business function is covered by a separate software solution. There is no golden rule as to what business functions should be part of the core ERP solution and each company needs to decide based upon their specific needs. For example, a company may define that the core ERP solution should cover those business processes that must stay behind the firewall and therefore choose to leave their core ERP on premise. At the same time, another company may decide to host the core ERP solution in the cloud and move only a few ERP modules as supplementary solutions to on premise. The main benefit that companies will gain from implementing postmodern ERP strategy is speed and flexibility when reacting to unexpected changes in business processes or at the organizational level. So where does SAP ERP fit in all this? 
SAP have been the pioneer of the ERP market and they've been an, the number one vendor across the world ever since they launched their release to Suite in 1970s. This was subsequently upgraded to a three-tier R3 system which then went on to become the ERP system and there were several releases between 2004 and 15. Things like business suite of products, uh, BW, etc. And finally, the latest offering is S4 HANA, which can be deployed on cloud, on premise, or a hybrid approach. Hope you found this session useful. See you again soon.